Hello and welcome to another Maya 101. So for this particular video I want to show you how to fix a very common rigging problem where if I just move this guy here you'll see that parts of his rig, so parts of that character, have flown off in space. Um, so that's a that's an incredibly common problem. Um, folks who are building their rigs for the very first time, especially folks who have built their rigs after having been taught parenting first, uh, run into exactly these issues. And what's going on here, and I'll just show you really quick, um, what's going on here is something we call double transforms. So to give you an idea of what I mean by that, um, we've got this um, sphere here, this ball bearing shape. Now this ball bearing shape actually uh, currently is being acted on by a couple different things. So if I select the ball bearing shape and I go control A and that opens up the channel box for that, um, if I scroll down you'll see I've got the skin cluster here so that ball bearing shape has been um, skinned to the skeleton uh, with a smooth bind so as you would with like say an organic character so that's one actor already so the, ske the skeleton is controlling the ball bearing um, because of that skin cluster weighting. So wherever the skeleton goes, the ball bearing goes with it. Now the other thing that's happening here is you'll see that that ball bearing actually exists in a parented hierarchy here. That ball bearing has been um, parented to the shock absorber. Like you can, you can tell because if I select the shock absorber, bam, there we go. The ball bearing, ball bearing is selected at the same time. Um, so now both of these options on their own can work, but when they're both acting at the same time, basically what's happening is I move this controller and uh, what's going on is that first the skin, the skin cluster is saying, hey, okay, I'm moving, I need you to move with me, but then at the same time, um, the shock absorber is also saying that. It is also saying, hey, no, I'm moving. I need you to move with me. Don't listen to that other guy. I'm way more important. And uh, the combination of these two um, forces, each coming in and telling this little poor ball bearing what to do, is causing it effectively to transform doubly. So those, those two algorithms are multiplying on top of each other and sending it off into space. Same thing is happening here with the uh, reflector. So what we're going to do is we're just going to basically um, we're going to make sure that the ref reflector and the ball bearing are just being acted on by one uh, one force at a time. It's either going to be a skin cluster or a parent or a constraint but it's just going to be one thing at a time so we don't have um, multiple objects transforming on that uh, thing and creating double transforms. Okay, so uh, that was our introduction, and let's get to it with the uh, next chapter. Okay, so now that we know what's going on, we're going to go in and try and fix this and create a new relationship hierarchy. Um, so one of the first things I'm going to do is I just want to see if the skin cluster alone is enough to control these objects. Um, I don't know. I mean, chances are, because I mean, if I, if I select this ball bearing, you'll see that I've got an animation key there. And that animation key um, is, of course, what's what's driving that, that really cool rotation. Uh, now, if I unparent it, will it still follow the same animation? I don't even know. Let's find out. So I'm just going to um, make sure I've just got that ball bearing selected. I'm going to go up to edit and unparent. And uh, it's still animating, but you can tell it's not following that shock absorber anymore. Um, that shock absorber is moving independently of it. And I've had a, a poke around this rig before. I'm pretty sure that shock, ab shock absorber is um, has got some interesting flexation happening because of the skin cluster. So if I just hit play there, I can tell it's still animating just fine on its own. Oh, hey, check that out. 
we still have some double transforms going on, don't we? Okay, that obviously did not do the trick. Nope, not very effective. Okay, let's go back in. And so that was just, just uh, unparenting that ball bearing. So I'm just going to go back in time, reparent it, and this time I'm going to get rid of that skin cluster. So I'm going to select ball bearing, and go edit, um, delete by type history, and you'll see that uh, there's a no more skin cluster node there. It's still got its animation, but will it follow this rig? That's the question. No. So we have solved one problem. It's no longer, well, it's no longer flying off in space. Yeah, it's a solution, but we're not actually there yet in regards to where this needs to be and what it needs to be doing. Okay, so now where we're at, we've disconnected that from uh, the skin cluster. Obviously, just having it, the ball bearing parented into the shock absorber is not enough to actually have that follow the shock absorber as it goes through its, um, as the controller moves it. So we need to find something else for it to be parented to or create a constraint. So what we can do is we can, um, we'll unparent that since, you know, if it was unparented, it would be left behind. So it's effectively behaving as if it's unparented anyways. So we're gonna go ahead and unparent that. Uh, still animates, cool. You notice that every time I do something, I just double check that nothing else has changed in the process. Um, that's just to make sure that I haven't actually introduced any more errors into an already error prone situation. Okay, so, well, we could just give it a shot. Let's try and parent it directly to that joint. Um, so the root joint of the skeleton there. So um, uh, for parenting, it's always the, the thing that's going to be parented, so the child of the relationship, and then the object that you are going to be, um, that is going to be driving the relationship, so the parent. So select the child, uh, shift select the parent, and you can just hit P on your keyboard, and that creates a parented relationship. It's not following um, exactly, which is a bit unfortunate, but again, that, that movement there is uh, actually caused by the skin weighting. So, but if we, let's see, if we actually move this controller now, will it follow? <gasps> yes, it does. It follows. It follows and, oh, how exciting. It doesn't fly off into space. And if I move it over here and I press play, oh, that ball is still rotating. That is so exciting. Okay, cool. Um, now for that, I don't want that clipping to happen. That's really unfortunate. Um, if the ball bearing is rolling on the bottom there, that uh, shock absorber should not be twitching up and clipping through that ball bearing. I mean, just physics should disallow the shock absorber from, from passing through the ball. But obviously Maya doesn't have real physics, it's all smoke and mirrors. We have to we have to add fake physics. We have to add make believe physics. Okay, so um, next step is to solve the problem where uh, the shock absorber is going through the ball there. Now um, one of the reasons why that might be happening is there is actually a, a bit of a minor double transform happening there. If I select that shock absorber, you'll see that it's currently parented to this um, HRD body. But it also, um, the shock absorber is also bound to the skeleton. It has its own control. So it shouldn't actually need to be parented at all. Like it should be able to follow because it's bound to that skeleton with this skin cluster, it should be able to follow the skeleton without needing to be parented to the body at all. Um, the only way to tell for sure is if we actually test that theory. I select that shock absorber and I go um, <laughs> to Photoshop apparently. Uh, 
wrong window. I select the, sh the shock absorber and I go edit and unparent and you'll see that that's dropped out of that HRD body uh, list and it's still, you know, it's not clipping anymore which is really nice but will it actually follow? That's the question. Um, yeah, and it looks like it does. Oh, that's so exciting. So does the wall behind, but that's only because I forgot to deselect it. Okay, check that out. It's following. Um, it's not clipping. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Next one, let's see if we can fix that um, little rotating dongle up there. Uh, so if I animate that forward, what's this guy called? Reflector 5. Okay, Reflector 5, Johnny 5, let's see, how do we fix you? Uh, once again, uh, this has a skin cluster, and it's parented. So, uh, I think same thing that we've been doing so far, where we... Um, first, what it sounds like. We choose one or the other as a relationship, like it's either um, parented or skin cluster, but not both. I think that might be the way to go. So let's just start by unparenting it. And it animates, which is really cool. So that hasn't changed. And it's like, it's following the body, which it would because it's got that skin cluster connected to the bones. Now let's just see if it will, ah, it stays with it. That's so cool. Now I should be able to take all of these HRD pieces, group them together, call them a new HRD group, and um, I won't be setting any keyframes or anything on that group. I should be able to still grab component pieces. I should still be able to animate. And it's that basically bucket group. It's a group that exists just to put everything else in it. That's what I'll be exporting. Okay, so that's how you fix double transforms. Just as a quick review, what we did was we um, uh, we first tried to identify what was acting on the object that was transforming off into space. Uh, we discovered that there were two things that were happening. There was a, a skin cluster node combining it to the skeleton here but it was also parented into the HRD body, and that was causing it to um, be transformed both by the HRD body and also be transformed by the skeleton, and that's why we call it double transforms. There you go. There is your um, troubleshooting rigging 101, fixing double transforms.